Hi, Chris Albanese, Director of Education, Real Estate Academy of Orlando. Back with some more math help here. The next question we're looking at is calculating the dock stamp taxes and intangible taxes for a sale. Now, the transaction we have is purchase price $72,525, earnest money $3,000, uh, recorded first mortgage $29,700, second mortgage, which is new, $15,800, and cash at closing $27,025. So let's take a look at the transaction itself. We've got the sale price of 72525 but let's see what's happening with the financing here. Well, first we have an assumed loan, and then we have a new loan. So the assumed loan means that the buyer is taking over the loan that the seller had already. Now the seller may have had uh, $29,700 of their previous loan when they purchased the property, uh, and maybe it's a very low interest rate, and it's assumable, meaning that the buyer can take over that loan at the original interest rate. So they took advantage of that, and they uh, worked that into their contract itself. So the buyer is going to be assuming that debt for the seller, rather than the seller paying that debt off. Now that wasn't enough to cover the full sale price, so uh, we needed to add in a second new loan to get some additional money here. So there's a new loan of $15,800. Add that in with the cash at closing plus the earnest money, and that's going to give the full sale price of $72,525. So that's what's happening with the transaction, but let's take a look at the taxes. Now, when it comes to the taxes, we've got, in this case, because there's financing, three different taxes. So uh, I've written them out as uh, S-I-N-N. So stamp tax on the deed, intangible tax, and the taxes on the notes. Now, the stamp tax on the deed, we pay this as a sales tax on every property transfer. When we sell the house or sell a property, the seller is going to be paying this to the state of Florida. The state wants a little piece of the action. In fact, their piece of the action is 70 cents for every $100 of debt. I'm sorry, for every $100 of sale price uh, or fraction thereof which means we always have to round up the number to the nearest $100. So in our example here, uh, let's use, in fact, a simple example. Let's say we had a really low sale price. Let's say our sale price was just uh, $1,020. In order to calculate the tax on that, uh, we have to round up first to the next $100. So round up to $1,100 because it's every fraction of $100. Never round down, always round up for the state taxes here. Now, we've got $1,100 and we're paying the taxes based on every $100 of that sale price. So we need to get the taxable units or taxable increments. So divide it by 100, which means we have 11 taxable units. So 11 little stacks of $100 bills. Uh, each of them we're gonna tax at 70 cents. So now take our 11 times 70 cents now what we have is seven dollars and seventy cents so if this was our true purchase price we would figure out the dock stamp tax on the deed there to be seven dollars and seventy cents okay so now we've got the taxes on the deed seventy cents for every one hundred dollars of sale price so let's pay attention to that that's going on sale price and that's for the deed and that's seventy cents now let's move down to the intangible tax what the intangible tax is, this is a recording tax. Don't think of it as a sales tax, think of it as a recording tax. Whenever this financing involved in a transaction, there's uh, almost always gonna be two documents at closing. One is gonna be the promissory note, which is the promise to repay. That's gonna contain all the terms and conditions of the loan. How many years is it? What are the monthly payments? What's the interest rate? All those details are written in the note. That's private, that's not recorded in the public records. Nobody sees that besides the lender and the borrower. But what we do record in the public records is a mortgage. The mortgage itself is just telling the world that this property here is collateral for this debt or some debt that we don't uh, know exactly what the details are. So we're gonna have two documents there. Intangible tax is the mortgage. That goes in the public records. Uh, it's just a recording tax. It's not a sales tax, it's a recording tax, which is why this is on new mortgages only. So we wanna pay attention closely to that. Tangible taxes on new mortgages. If we're assuming a mortgage, well, that mortgage has already been recorded. We don't have to pay to re-record it. So intangible is for new mortgages only. Now this is taxed at a rate of two mils or 0.002 for every dollar of debt. 
So dollar of debt, again, we're dealing now with loan amount. So uh, if the, let's say the debt here was $1,000, and multiply that by 0 0.002. Now this would equal two bucks would be our tax on uh, $1,000. All right, next let's look at our stamp taxes on the notes. So the notes is very similar to what we did for the stamp tax on the deed because it's also based on $100 increments uh, but now we're not dealing with sale price, we're only dealing with loan amount, and the rate is 35 cents. Uh, it's exactly half of what it was for the stamp tax and the deed. Stamp tax and the deed, 70 cents. Stamp tax on the note, half of that. It's 35 cents for every $100 of debt. So again, we're going to do the same thing. Make sure we round up the nearest $100, divide that number by 100, and multiply it by 35 cents. So now the rounding issue is the number one most important issue that I see students uh, making mistakes on, on the, on the school test here. They forget to round up the nearest $100. Now if you do that, your answer is going to be off by somewhere between $0.35 cents and $0.70 cents, uh, from the correct answer. So make sure you're rounding up S and N. So you can think of it as S and N get rounded up, but I don't. Okay, so make sure you round and make sure that when it calculates the intangible tax, it's new mortgages only. So with this information, let's go back to our problem and take a look at what we have. Okay, so now let's take a look uh, one at a time through our uh, original items here. So we've got purchase price, 72525 What do we need to do? We know we need to round this up to the nearest $100. This is going to become 72625 $100. Now, earnest money deposit of $3,000. We don't care about this at all for this question uh, because it's not calculated uh, into our taxes. Now, the recorded first mortgage uh, is assumed, so we know that we're going to be paying the stamp tax on the note on that one because there will be a new note, but we don't have to re record the mortgage itself because the mortgage will remain on the property. It's already been recorded, we don't pay that again. The second new mortgage of $15,800, we will pay both the intangible tax um, and the note for that one. So recorded first mortgage is just the note only. And cash at closing, we don't need at all. All right, so now let's take a look at how do we solve this. So we've got our stamp tax on the deed, sale price times uh, divided by 100, multiply it by 70 cents. So we're going to take 72,600 divided by 100. That equals 720. That equals 726 taxable units. Taxable units, multiply that by 0 0.70. And that's going to give us an answer of. five hundred and eight dollars and twenty cents so that's our first tax stamp tax on the deed five oh eight twenty next let's go to our intangible tax now this is for new mortgages only so our new mortgage is fifteen thousand eight hundred so we're going to take the fifteen eight hundred and we're going to just multiply that by double o two times point zero zero two because this one is not going to be rounded at all. Uh, that's going to give us a tangible tax rate of $31.60. Okay, next we have our taxes on the notes. So we had our new loan of $15,800, so let's calculate the note for that one, $15,800. And we're going to divide this by 100, because it's just like we did for the stamp tax on the deed. That's going to give us 158 taxable units. And then multiply that by the tax rate. In this case, now it's 35 cents. Remember, it's exactly half of the stamp tax on the deed. So 158 times 0.35 equals $55.30. So now we've got the intangible and the note for the new loan. Let's take a look at our assumed loan. So our final N here is 29,700 divided by 100, same as we did earlier, 
we've got 297 taxable units. Multiply that by 0.35, and we get an answer there of 103.95. So now we've calculated the individual taxes for the deed, the intangible tax, and the two different notes. We're just going to add these four up, and that's going to give us our final answer here. So add them all up, and we get an answer of 699.05, and that is our answer. Uh, next I'm going to give you a simplified version of doing the calculations here. But this is the uh, long form way, and this is the first way you should learn how to do it. Okay, so what we see here on the final screen is this is what I say is the more simplified version of the same information we had earlier. So we had our three different taxes, our S-I-N-N, -N, uh, stamp tax on the deed, 70 cents for every $100 of debt. Uh, the stamp tax on the note was 35 cents for every $100 of debt. And then the intangible tax was two mils for every dollar of debt. Now, instead of taking the number uh, rounding up to the nearest 100, dividing it by 100, and then multiplying it by the tax rate, we're going to do all of this in one step. But the first thing you have to do is make sure you've always rounded up to the nearest $100 for both your tax on the deed and your tax on the notes. So remember your asterisk there, round up first before you do anything else. So starting with the tax on the deed, we've got our sale price, that's what we're uh, calculating based on. So sale price times 007, 0 .007. Now, that's the same math formula as dividing by 100 and then multiplying by 0 0.70. So, uh, sale price times 007. And I start with that because everybody knows James Bond is 007. So, we always know all of these tax rates, if we're doing the shorthand formula, always begins with 0, .00, 00.00. So, tax rate is 007. So, if we take our sale price, 72,600, times 0 0.007, we get 508.20. So the exact same thing we had in the long form version. Uh, the intangible tax is the loan amount times 002. That's a, in fact exactly the same as we had the first way we did it. There's no changes here at all. Uh, then the notes. Loan amount, round up to the nearest $100 first and multiply it by 0 .0035 or 0035. So, and we get our same exact answers here. Now the trick to this is just remembering what these numbers are. Now, always start with James Bond, starts with 007, so you know, always know everything begins with 00. The next one down is the intangible tax is 2 mils, and we know also that the note here is exactly half of the tax in the deed. So 7 divided by 2 is 3.5, so uh, that helps me to remember this 3, 5 here. So always do 002 or 00. And then 007, 002, 0035, 0035. I hope that helps you answer these questions here. Uh, if you have any questions, please write to us at info at reaorlando.com or visit us online at realestateacademyoforlando.com. If you have ideas for other math problems, send them in to us and we'll do a video for you. Thanks again.